night from Danville, Ohio, as the Blue Devils look to get win number one here on their home court against the Fredericktown Freddies who are undefeated in K-Mac play. We got all the action coming your way on your smartphone, TV, PC, tablet, any smart device you have, and it's coming your way next. Community Hospital, your primary care physician is more than someone who delivers your test results, more than someone who writes prescriptions, more than someone who listens to your heart. We are your health care partner who takes the time to know you, listen to your concerns, and provide you with expert personalized care to make and keep you well. Because to us, you're more than just numbers on a chart, you're a neighbor and a friend. Knox Community Hospital, in the community, for the community. At the Kilbuck Savings Bank, you can expect great products and service from a fellow Knox County Chamber member. Now offering premier card processing solutions and services, ensuring the business owners understand their credit card processing fees. We have a wide selection of card processing solutions that provide lower fees, faster payment, additional security, exceptional marketing features, and help to improve your business operations and customer experience. Welcome you inside the Frito-Lay pregame show coming to you live and free from Danville, Ohio for tonight's K-Mac clash between the Fredericktown Freddies and the Danville Blue Devils. Hello everybody, my name is Travis Berardi alongside Hayden Gray and Hayden, you know, Danville up to a, a little bit of a tough start, three games in conference, three losses, but this is a team that, you know, had that long football run, so they're trying to get, you know, their feet under themselves still. Yeah, the, obviously a tough start to the season for them, but hey, for right now, still doesn't feel too bad when your reasoning is because your football team went so far. So that only lasts so long, but hopefully those wins will start to come to fruition on the hardwood as well. And they're taking on a Fredericktown Freddy squad that, you know, out of conference played some tough competition, couple losses, but in conference, they are undefeated. As we take a look at our team spotlight brought to you by Frito-Lay, first four, the Freddies of Frederick Town under head coach Derek Dibbling, two and three this season, two and zero oh in the conference. Uh, lost a tough one to Kip Columbus on Saturday. Kip Columbus, one of those Columbus schools that are always good down there. Those private schools in that area in Division three and four in the Central District, always tough. Ninety to sixty-two offensively, Frederick Town forty-eight point two points per game, and. It's a little deceiving because they gave up the 90 points that boosted up their number, but it's, a, it's about the same, about 48, 45 percent, uh, points per game on both sides. Yeah, and it's a team full of athletes. Uh, one of the things that's a big perk in the K-Mac is you got a lot of guys that play multiple sports. So, uh, you know, we come to recognize a lot of these guys from fall sports or spring sports, uh, such as Kate Carpenter, Ben Mass, Tegan Rule. Um, and if I'm missing any, uh, my apologies. but. You know, you recognize a lot of these guys. So, you know, they're a team that's got a lot of athletes on them. They're well coached, and uh, we'll see what they're able to do here on a road game tonight. Now let's take a look at the home team spotlight brought to you once again by Frito-Lay, and it is the Blue Devils of Danville High School. The regional runners-up in Division Seven for football made it to an Elite Eight and were just mere feet away from making it to the state final four and possibly further. But uh, under head coach Steve Lines, like I said, tough start, 0-3. 0-3 in the conference as well, and they've been close games. 
Lost to Cardington 56-48 on Friday. They can put up numbers, 58 points per game, but defensively, they still need to find that defensive game, giving up 65 points per game. Yeah, and I'm glad you mentioned they can put points up. Uh, they lost in a close one to, I believe it was Mount Gilead, um, or was it Mount Vernon? It was one of the mounts. Uh, Mount Gilead. They put up 75 points, so they're a team that can get you that offense, but like you said, still trying to figure out their defensive game plan. And as I mentioned uh, at the beginning of the broadcast, uh, you know, they're a little bit out of disadvantage, just a late start to the year, getting some of the guys out here that they need, but uh, that'll wear off, and it'll be go time to get things going here looking for their first win. Yeah, Spencer Payne in that game, actually, against Mount Gilead, put up 27 points him, you know, you know his brother Max, Mr. Jump Pass in in football, but a lot of the football players out here as well for the team, and you have a, a few of those starting Walker Weckesser, Max Payne, Levi Lyons, Kendall Carter, and actually Spencer, so all football players here as well as a, a senior-laden squad as well. Seven seniors, three juniors, two sophomores, and a freshman on this squad. Actually, three juniors and a sophomore. Well, and it's kind of similar to another Blue Devil team, Cary. We saw this happen with them. A lot of guys from their football team last season also played basketball, too. So it takes a little bit to get that transitioned over to your winter sport. So we're just about ready here to go at Danville High School in the Frito-Lay pregames. We're moments away from the national anthem on a KMAC Boys Tuesday night. Ladies and gentlemen, as a member of the Ohio High School Athletic Association, Danville High School welcomes you to the next contest between the Freddies of Fredericktown High School and your Blue of Danville High School. To honor America, please stand for the playing of the national anthem. Just about ready to go here in the Frito-Lay pregame. I want to welcome everybody watching live and free this evening on the OH Report. Let us know where you're watching from tonight. Give us a shout out. We'll shout you out this evening. Uh, other games in the KMAC tonight. Car uh, Cardington Lincoln at Northmore. Golden Knights leading that one right now, 23-10 early on in the second quarter. And then East Knox is at Centerburg. Mount Gilead is the team with the off night tonight from KMAC action. But uh, a very condensed KMAC as well to start the year. Centerburg undefeated. And then Northmore one game behind. A couple other teams two games behind. So, you know, you're... Four games into the conference schedule, but, you know, uh, still a lot of ways that he played. And a lot of teams that still have a chance at winning the conference championship. And right as I mentioned, that Centerburg <laughs> up 18-6 after one over East Knox. And I think we kind of expected a tight race. We all knew, uh, you know, Centerburg was going to come out strong uh, this year. A uh, ton of talent back from that team last year and so well coached. But from there, you and I have talked about, obviously Golden Knights want to compete for that number one spot, but they're a solid number two right now and uh, so much good competition. So tonight will be meaningful for the conference. 
as we get ready for the lineups for Danville. So let's show oh. you. I feel like I'm at Clear Fork High School right now. I was going to say, this must be the new trend, Trav. Anywho, let's show you first <laughs> the Fredericktown lineup. They're somewhere over there. But you got Cade Carpenter, Tegan Roll, Ben Mass, Brady Lester, and actually Trevor Bellman is in there as well for the Freddies. Football team versus football team, pretty much. Yeah, pretty much. So there's your lineups for Fredericktown. And now for the Blue Devils of Danville. Wackester, Payne, Payne, Levi Lines, Kendall Carter. These two teams battled a close one on the football field. Now we'll see what they can do here on the home court of the Blue Devils. Danville. They are coached by Steve Lyons, while Fredericktown coached by Derek Dibbling. Any final words before we get this started, Hayden? I'm pretty excited. Uh, it's my first time here for a game in Danville, and certainly the pageantry large here tonight. Hungry for that win, so I think we're in it for a good night of hoops. JV game was pretty entertaining. Carpenter versus Carter to start things off. K-Mac Hoops here on a Tuesday night, and we are underway. Ball knocked out of bounds. It'll stay in possession with Fredericktown. And just like that, the Freddies with the first points of the game. And Tegan, a kid with a lot of speed, uh, made a beautiful cut right off his first step. Two quick bursts to the hoop. Max Payne trapped, and he is fouled. And we'll take a look at the first Knox Community Hospital replay of the game. As you see Rule taking it into the hole. Foul's going to go against Brady Lester, his first on the trap. And Max Payne, the other number 11, will inbound. Spencer gets it back to Max. Danville's first possession of the game. Right side to Weckesser. He'll back it back out. Now we'll try to drive it in. Kicks it to Levi Lines. Back to Weckesser. He's going to try a three. Swish. Walker hits first. It's 3 2. Nice confidence early. It wasn't a completely open shot, but he pulled up with confidence and knocked it down. Ben Mast. Getting into the offense, inside the Carpenter. Carter closely on him, bumping back and forth. Too strong off the board, Danville gets the rebound. Payne. Looking for a screen, won't use it. Gets it stripped away, turnover. Back comes Fredericktown. Ahead the Carpenter, layup good, 4-2, 4-3. Again, a lot of explosive guys on this team that can get out quick. Don't really have like a you know a true big body. Carpenter would probably be the tallest, largest athlete on the on the floor for Fredericktown right now. And even then, a lot of speed. Weckesser fakes another three. He'll drive it in. Double team kicks it right side. Spencer Payne will drive in. Back out. Lions will try to three off the back iron. No good. Rebound to Trevor Bellman. Quickly ahead. Lester spins off the glass. No good. Back come the Blue Devils. Two minutes gone by, 4-3 Fredericktown. Weckesser backs it out and will reset. Payne into the lane. This is it off. Layup shot no good. Offensive rebound put back. And Lions will have two shots. Good take there. Strong take gets blocked though and Kudos to both sides, Lions, for fighting to get the second chance opportunity in Fredertown. Didn't want to give up an easy basket this early into the game. That's Tegan Rules first, the second on the Freddies. Yeah. 
Lions first three free throw, good. We're tied at four. Freddy's looking to stay atop the K-Mac early on while Lions and company looking to get win number one. 5-4 after two makes. Mast, right side to Lester. Looking to get inside to Carpenter, he does. Nice pass inside, Rule misses the layup though. Back come the Blue Devils. Weck Esser. Double team, kicks it back out to Spencer Payne. He'll try to drive it in. He's double teamed, but he gets it away. Carter's gonna try a three. Can't get it to fall though. Quickly ahead is Carpenter. Carpenter with the move. Gets the man up in the air and he will go to the line. That was a nice job by Cade Carpenter to get his defender up. Yeah, and he's livid. You know, he wanted to try and finish off that three point play, but early into this one did a nice job of making the defender bite on the contact. Carpenter in and out on the first, misses. And now I know Cade, we talked about a little bit, took a nasty fall in one of their games the other night. Was concerned about the health of his arm, his left arm, but so far looking like his usual self. Misses both. Rebound to Danville. Right side, three in the air for Payne. Misses, but the putback is there. It's 7-4. Second chance points have been the story so far for Danville. They're just hovering around that rim. Leckesser with five points. Nice backdoor cut. Let Rule gets it back. Now to Carpenter. He'll drive it in. Woo, nifty move and gets the finish. Four points for him. 7-6 coming up on the midway point of the first quarter. Leckesser. Right side, three by Max Payne, yes. It's clear Danville's looking to, you know, make them respect their inside game so they can pass it outside and not down those trays like they did. 10-6 Danville. They've hit two threes already. Carpenter's is going to try one. In and out, no good. Rebound to the Blue Devils. Into the lane. No, they're going to call it on the floor. Take Here's the replay coming up, but they're going to say the bump right, the strip attempt, actually. So Danville will inbound underneath their bucket. That's the second foul on Tegan Rule. That'll be important to note, you know, just four minutes into the game. Missed chance there by Lions. Back comes Carpenter. Euro steps too strong, offensive rebound. Carpenter again into the lane. Triple team gets it back out. Mast now unable to hit. Rule gets the rebound though, and he will go to the line. Couple offensive rebounds there for the Freddies, giving them a couple chances at the free throw line now. Physical game early into the action. Neither side wanting to give up any easy baskets. First shot, no good. So we have our first substitution of the game. Dylan Beckett, or Dustin Beckett, checks in. Travis, I think this is our first uh, KMAC boys basketball game together this season. Yes. We've just been doing the girls, but chance to do the boys tonight. An 0 for 4 start by Fredericktown here. Payne's going to try to three. <laughs> it's almost as if he had unlimited range, Travis. 13 6. Oh, I see what you did there. I we'll, see we'll what get, you did we'll there. We'll get into the story a little bit later, but yeah. Lester looking to answer. Nice touch. He does. 13 8. Payne gets it to Weckesser. 
He'll drive it in, pull up jumper short. Rebound up in the air, it stays with Danville. Out to Beckett. Under three to play first quarter, 13-8 Danville. Payne, right side, Weckesser. He's double teamed, back out to Spencer. Now the Max, Max gonna try another one. That one too strong though. Quickly ahead, Lester. And we're gonna get a foul. That's the second foul on Max Payne. That's a big call, you know. Uh, he's been really hot from the field. Six points here in the first quarter, but he's gonna have to take a seat because of those two fouls. Carpenter with the inbounds. And a kick called, so it'll stay. Blake Colopy will check in for Payne. Carpenter on the block, double team, still pushes it up, no good, put back, off the rim, another chance, again missed, and finally Danville gets the rebound after two offensive chances by Fredericktown. Weckesser into the corner to Beckett, working it around, now to Spencer Payne, two minutes left, first quarter, 13-8, Blue Devils. Into the lane, left side, Beckett just inside the three-point line, nothing but net. First points for Beckett, it's 15-8. The deep two-pointer. Doing a nice job from the field as a team, as a unit right now. Fredericktown looking for another answer. Carpenter, he's just going to try the three, and he hits. You can't give him that much time. Now he had a lot of time to study it right there. And you could tell that he wanted to try it and he made the most. On the other end though, Spencer Payne gets onto the board finally. And it's 17-11. Take a look at the bucket by Payne. Really crafty take from him and you're seeing what we talked about during pregame right now still you know, a minute and some change left in the first quarter, and they've posted 17 on the other side. Now Fredericktown with a chance to finally get their first free throw made, their third trip to the line in the first quarter. See if Mr. Carpenter can do so. In and out. 0 for 3 start. This has been brutal from, for them right now. You know, down 6. There's five points they could have had from the line. Dom Thompson in the game, and now Xavier Mullins will be in as well. Carpenter's second free throw. Wow. Misses again. 0 for 6 are the Freddies, the start from the free throw line. And a tough shot there on the other end. We'll give Fredericktown another chance with a minute left in the quarter. Carpenter loses the handle, gets it to Thompson. Thompson double teamed and he's gonna get bumped. That should be a foul on Colopy, his first. Foul's starting to you know, pile up here a bit. Fifth team foul of the quarter. Freddy's. Inbounding just to the left of the Danville bench. Gets it over to Mast. Carpenter's gonna try another three off the front iron, no good, rebound to Danville. Weckesser for three. Maybe. He's got his second three, eight points. It's 20 to 11. Quickly on the other end. Thompson to the lane. He's rejected by Weckesser. But Fredericktown gets the rebound. And then we're going to get a block. Take a look at the replay on that defensive stop. Hmm. Believe that'll send Fredericktown. Now the call is on the floor. But again, six team foul now here for Danville. So 
Fettertown's definitely been aggressive when they're trying to drive into the lane. They're looking for contact. Danville with four threes in this first quarter. Thompson off the inbounds, can't get it to go. Blue Devils quickly ahead. Weckesser, what a pass, layup good. Yeesh. Now that's a highlight reel type pass right there. The no look special. 22-11. And we'll get a foul, so that gives us a chance to look at that pretty pass one more time. Wow, Quack Esther with the no look. I don't know what's more impressive, the fact that, you know, he did convert it so cleanly, but you could tell when we got to look at the replay, he thought about it, thought no, and then still did it. Finally, Fredericktown able to hit from the charity strike. Rule gets his third point, back to a 10-point game here at the end of the first quarter. Misses the second. Rebound, though, will stay. A lot of contact there, but the refs letting this continue on. And the Freddies with the chance to get this to within single dig digits. That would be Carpenter. Big. Pull up jumper off the front iron, no good. And that'll be the quarter, and we'll get a foul at the end of the quarter as well. We'll tell you who that's on after the break. 22 12, Danville. A big shooting outburst from beyond the arc. We'll take a break, be back live and free right here on the OH Report. At Knox Community Hospital, your primary care physician is more than someone who delivers your test results, more than someone who writes prescriptions, more than someone who listens to your heart. We are your healthcare partner who takes the time to know you, listen to your concerns, and provide you with expert personalized care to make and keep you well. Because to us, you're more than just numbers on a chart, you're a neighbor and a friend. Knox Community Hospital, in the community, for the community. Played one at Danville and the Blue Devils 22-12 with the lead over Fredericktown after one quarter of play. Travis Berardi alongside Hayden Gray and Hayden four threes in that first quarter by the Blue Devils. Not a bad start for them here. No, when you combine that with how aggressive they're playing uh, offensively when they do miss and trying to get those offensive boards, uh, they've just been done a really nice job from the field to build that 10-point lead. We got a foul down here. See who that's on. That will be against Luke Bean, the senior, getting his first minutes of the game. You know, that, that's another name that pregame I did forget. Luke Bean, another impressive guy um, from the Freddies baseball team last year. Update from North Bloomfield Township, Northmore, 36. Cardington 23 with three and a half minutes left mm, in the okay. opening quarter. Or in the opening half, I should say. Blue Devils looking to drive. Out of bounds, but it will stay. Nate Stevens getting his first moments in now for Danville. <coughs> Black Esser. He leads all scores with eight points. Lost it out of bounds, and that's a Danville turnover. Surprisingly, only the second turnover of the game, both by the Blue Devils. Yeah, despite, you know, it's been a little bit blinding by a lot of fouls, but 
ball control and ball handling has been pretty clean thus far. Bean, give and go from Mullins, puts it up, and we'll get the foul. We'll take a look at the Knox Community Hospital replay. Was able to get Payne up in the air. They're actually going to call it against Beckett, his first. And that will put Luke Bean to the line for the one and one, for two shots actually on the shot. Was a shooting foul. Didn't know if they called it on the floor earlier or not, but nonetheless he makes the first free throw. Nice job knocking it down, makes him two of nine now on the evening. Second free throw, good. 22-14. And we're going to get a reach-in foul. So the fouls continue. Yeah, eight team f eighth team foul of the half for Fredericktown. That one's going to be against Bellman, his first. And do you like Payne, Hayden? There are three Paynes playing in this game as Wesley Payne has checked in. He's trying to inbound it, barely avoids the five-second count, that yeah. kind of pain, not the Yeah, not no P-A-I-N, but uh, P -A -Y -N -E. Yeah, and I think people down here in Danville definitely appreciate when the pain's brought. And he brought the pain there into the game, hits a three. 25-14, back on the other end. In and out, offensive rebound, no good. A second chance, no. And it'll stay So we take a look at the three. You can tell that's definitely what Danville is looking to do tonight, create opportunities from outside and down back on this end. I like the effort on that possession from Fredericktown to try and fight to keep possession, especially with guys such as Tegan Rule, who was out and Cade Carpenter now checked back in. 17 players have already checked into this game. We're only a minute through the second quarter. Wow. Carpenter just back into the game. Gets it to Lester. Now to Bean for three. Mr. Bean is here with the bucket. He has five. That's good. They need another spark. You know, Teagan's tried to create some offense, but it's really felt like it's been Kate Carpenter versus Danville. So nice to see Bean come in. Offensive foul. Can't extend the arm like you did. And Wesley Payne called for it. Now, because it's a player control foul that will not put Fredericktown to the line, however, will go towards their foul number. The next one will put Fredericktown to the line for two shots. Lester to Bellman, now to Carpenter in the corner. Carpenter leads Fredericktown with seven points. Nice dish off, layup, yes. At an assist there as Rule gets his fifth point. It's 25-19. And Tegan really works well uh, in those types of plays that are designed to let him use his speed to get open and then, you know, kind of receive that pass on the inside. We're going to get another foul. That'll be Luke Bean's second. And that'll put Fredericktown, or Danville, to the line for the one and one. Another reason why there's 17 players in this game, Hayden? Right. A lot of fouls. Yeah, it, it's was just, the 16th. It's way too early uh, to be sending your, your opponent to the line with six minutes left in the half. Uh, you know, just the one and one for now, but certainly not helping when you're trying to dig your way out of a deficit. Free throw, good. That's the fifth point for Beckett. Second no good, rebound to the Freddies. Carpenter in the lane with the scoop. Again, can't get it go, but the offensive rebounds there for Tegan Rule, and we'll get a timeout by the Blue Devils. That's the eighth offensive rebound by the Freddies tonight. 
as you take a look at the replay there. And they started to take some notes. They were tired of letting Danville control the offensive boards down on their side. So starting to put two and two together, trim the lead back down to single digits. And, you know, they're trending upward as we head towards halftime. Tonight's high school bro boys basketball broadcast brought to you live and free. Thanks to our generous sponsors, the Killbuck Savings Bank, Community Banking, it's what we do, it's who we are every single day. The Hangout, food, fun, friends, stop in today and enjoy sandwiches, pizza, subs, and much more, dine-in or pickup, located right down the street from the high school here in Danville, Ohio. Frito-Lay, we are driven and inspired by our purpose, food that matters for life's moments. And Knox Community Hospital, in the community, for the community. Thank you all for allowing us to bring you these high school basketball live streams live and free on the OH Report. Five fifty left here in the first half. A 9-4 run by Fredericktown has them now to within five. This was an 11-point lead. They have a 6-0 run currently. Knocked out of bounds by Carpenter. It will stay with Danville. We'll get another substitution. Well, and something helping Fredericktown right now, too, is uh, with Max Payne still having to be on the bench. Uh, not that Wekesser hasn't, you know, been dangerous from behind the line as well, but Max uh, with some of those deep threes in the first quarter. Those two early fouls still have him sidelined, though. However, Fredericktown going with, you know, the opposite approach. They have a couple guys out there with a foul each. Looking for the inbounds. Nearly a backcourt, but Wekesser gets it. Kicks it around. That's Payne. He'll back it out. Under five and a half to play here. First half. And that's going to be a travel. He kind of tripped up. And it will go back to Fredericktown. They can make this a one possession game on this possession. Be big for them. They need to take their time and try and find a nice available basket. Carpenter looking for the back door and said he'll take it himself. He's fouled and will go to the line. Oh. Halftime score real oh, quick, Hayden, yeah. from, center, from Centerburg. The Trojans up 38-11 on East Knox. Another strong night for the Trojans and tying it in the strength. It's clear that Kate Carpenter, you know, they don't want to allow him to have an easy, easy basket, but he can be a difference maker if he keeps knocking down these free throws. He, he's hungry to attack the hoop tonight, and their only answer has been to foul him every single time, it just about seems. This time he makes them both. And a steal and a layup. It's a two point, it's a one point game actually. 26-25. Blake Colopy off the iron, no good. Rebound to Fredericktown, they have a chance to take the lead. Left side, Lester off the iron. There's Cade Carpenter. Blocked. No, they're going to call a foul. Ooh, let's take a look at this one. Mm, I mean, it, 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 are they saying a little bit of uh, little body. from Wekeser on the on the arm? Definitely a 50-50 call. Well, they're going to call it on Carter, so. Oh. I guess with the arm going, the, the motion of the arm going down for the block, oh. maybe, but... Nonetheless, Carpenter has a chance to give Fredericktown the lead back. In and out, no good. Kate up to eight points now. Tegan, next leading score for them was seven. Second free throw off the front iron. And they're going to get Carpenter with the foul on the, on the rebound. That'll be his first. And that should put Danville now to the line. 
unless they called him with a lane violation. No, they called him on the foul, so I don't. Center Town trying to force another steal. And they do. Lester, layup. Doesn't get it, though. They got the steal, but Danville able to survive that. Three on the other end, no good. Long rebound to the Freddies. Nice pass. Fredericktown leads. Rule with nine as Thompson dished it at the last second. Fredericktown picking up the pace now. Payne into the lane, and we're going to get a foul before the pass, but that will send him to the line for a one and one. So we take a look at the replay. Watch this pass, Hayden. Just at the last second, there could have been a call either way there. I like the referees not calling anything. Didn't look like the defensive player was set. Didn't look like the offensive player was too out of control trying to avoid him, so they dished it off and let the play happen. And the Freddies just have full momentum right now. Everything's going the way they'd like to, and you know it's not just because of fate. It's they're they're changing the way they were playing in the first quarter. That that wasn't bringing about the results they wanted. But now you can tell they're working more as a team and not just you know so one dimensional, and that's paid off. One and one. Misses the first. Carpenter with the rebound, wearing a timeout by the Freddies. 4.17 remaining here. Opening half, 27-26 Fredericktown after the Freddies trailed. 22-12 after one. I want to say hello to Aaron Sipes. Let's go Freddies. 122 of you watching and only one comment? Come on. Let us, Let us know, know where you're watching for. from. Come on, it's a K-Mac Tuesday night. Live and free right here on the OH Port. Our first ever boys broadcast from That's Danville. True. Brian and I did girls basketball a couple Saturdays ago. Now we're back for girl, uh, boys action tonight, and then Hayden and I will be right here tomorrow for girls action between these two schools. Bellman from the elbow, no good. Rebound to Danville. Midway point of quarter number two. A 15-4 quarter by the Freddies. Walker Weckesser for three, and he finally breaks the streak. Danville back on top of his third three of the night. He has 11. That's big. They definitely needed to kind of get over the, you know, barrier of not seeing a shot go through for a while. Carpenter had it inside the rule, but he stepped on the line, and that'll be the first turnover for the Freddies. If you take a look at Weckesser's three to give him the lead back. He's now up to 11 points. Across the timeline. That's Payne. Right side. The other Payne, but short. Bellman. Looking inside. Doesn't have anything. Kicks it back out to Mullins. Now to Carpenter. Coming up on three minutes left in the half. Carpenter has plenty of room to pull off the three. Doesn't get it, ball on the floor. Somehow comes right back out the Carpenter. He puts up a tough shot, no good. Rebound to Danville. A lot going on there. Into the lane, four guys coming around and Weckesser will go to the line. Great ball fake to get not one, not two, but three defenders up in the air. Glad to see everyone get up and, and walk out of that with no injuries or such. First three throw for Weckesser, good. He has 12 points. Defense, 
Second free throw. Good. Thirty-one twenty-seven. Blue Devils on a little bit of a run themselves here. Yeah, they're, they're hanging around. Uh, Got to keep battling back and forth. If they continue to knock down three, they're keeping themselves in the game. Carpenter over the Mullins. Running the flex offense. Loses the handle but gets it to Lester. Lester back out front. And around the Carpenter. Nice backdoor cut. Mid-range using the glass. Good. Lester with his fourth point. Spencer Payne. Going to run some clock. Finally, Carpenter comes up to guard him. Payne jump stops at the elbow, gets to Weckesser. Left side. Carter now to Weckesser for three. Too strong, though. Rebound Fredericktown. Yeah, and that's that other side of that three-point game that can be not your best friend but your worst enemy. They're catching the ball ready to shoot but not always ready to, you know, put it in. Tough shot by Cade Carpenter. Quickly the other way. Rejection. Euro step layup no good. Offensive rebound rejected. 90 seconds left in the half. And the Freddies throw it away. A lot going on in that sequence, Hayden. So yeah. we're tied at 31. Is that the first turnover of the half for Fredericktown? Second. Second. So, you know, despite the, the tempo of the action and, and some of the chaotic moments, both teams have done well controlling turnovers. But, yeah, uh, you know, this is the longest down period we've had just waiting to inbound the ball here. Very fast-paced game. Behind the back, Spencer Payne gets it off to Wesley. Now to Levi Lines for three, no good. Rebound Fredericktown. Just off the mark. Both teams, 12 defensive rebounds in this first half. However, Fredericktown has owned the offensive glass. However, not a lot to go with it. They haven't been able to get many points. Under a minute left in the half. Cade Carpenter. Pick and roll to Mullins, back out to Lester, layup shot. No, it's a travel beforehand. So with 46.3 left, Danville, and as Dylan Looney would say, Mr. Unlimited. There we go. That's from him, not me. Thanks, Dylan. Ben McClay, go Freddies. Cody Straub, go Blue Devils. I know, I only said it once because I've met Max one time and, and, you know, I have a feeling he doesn't get the fondness too much more out of that nickname, but we had to use it at least once. Especially by the way the actual quarterback that said that is doing. Yeah, great true. give and go, though, by Mr. Unlimited the Lions. His first field goal, 33-31. Carpenter, 20 seconds left in the half. Looking for the back door, doesn't go. Spin move off the glass. Pretty move by Cade Carpenter. Ten seconds left in the half. Quickly ahead, but he gets the steal. He has another chance at the buzzer. Pulls up for three. Yes! Count the bucket. Calm, cool, collected is Brady Lester before the horn gives Fredericktown the 36-33 lead at the break. We'll take a break. Be back with the Frito-Lay Halftime Stats Analysis and much more. You're watching KMAC Boys Hoops live and free on a Tuesday night.
At Knox Community Hospital, your primary care physician is more than someone who delivers your test results, more than someone who writes prescriptions, more than someone who listens to your heart. We are your healthcare partner who takes the time to know you, listen to your concerns, and provide you with expert personalized care to make and keep you well. Because to us, you're more than just numbers on a chart, you're a neighbor and a friend. Knox Community Hospital, in the community, for the community. At the Kilbuck Savings Bank, you can expect great products and service from a fellow Knox County Chamber member. Now offering premier card processing solutions and services, ensuring the business owners understand their credit card processing fees. We have a wide selection of card processing solutions that provide lower fees, faster payment, additional security, exceptional marketing features, and help to improve your business operations and customer experience. You know you gotta climb high. Welcome you inside the Frito Lay Halftime Show with Fredericktown leading 36 33 on a Brady Lester three at the buzzer. Travis Berardi alongside Hayden Gray. And you know, for a moment you thought Dandel might be running away with this with so many threes in the first half, but then Fredericktown in the second quarter really answered back to take the three-point lead. The offensive tempo and the points they put up so quickly in the first quarter definitely made you feel that way. Uh, so you know they're capable of it, but 
Uh, having to make Max Payne sit down with those fouls really benefited, benefited Fredericktown, and they've kind of played a lot more team ball there in the second quarter, have some guys uh, you know, more involved, and that's why we're going to take a look at some of these numbers that are what they are now. Yep, 14 field goals to 11 for Fredericktown. However, six threes to three in favor of Danville. Both teams with five foul shots made. But Fredericktown with the three-point advantage. Uh, a lot of fouls in that first quarter, first half, I should say. Uh, turnovers, Danville had a few in uh, three or four in a two, three-minute time. But other than that, it's been a pretty clean game, Hayden. Yeah, you know, uh, we're, we've been used to seeing a lot of high volume of turnovers in a lot of games so far this season. And tonight, it's been the exact opposite with just 10 combined. Uh, it's been a really clean game in that aspect. And like you said, though, uh, you know, one crucial aspect to the second half may be who is going to be more disciplined, uh, not give up as many fouls. You know, it's not the end of the world if you're Danville. Uh, Fredericktown really, really struggled uh, almost 30% from the free throw line. And that could come down the line to maybe be an advantage, but you don't want to rely on that. So, uh, you know, try and keep your guys out there on the floor. You don't want to have Max Payne pick up a third foul here in the third quarter or anything like that. A couple scores, finals actually from around the K-Max. Centerberg remains unbeaten in conference play, and I think overall actually 63-16 mm. over East Knox. And Northmore, 56-33 winners over Cardington Lincoln. So the Golden Knights remain a game back there and we'll see if Fredericktown can keep pace with Centerberg holding on here. Let's look at some individual scoring first. The leading scorer for Fredericktown is Kate Carpenter. Six made field goals, 15 points to lead the way. Tegan Rule follows with nine points. Brady Lester with seven. Luke Bean with five to finish out the scoring. But Kate Carpenter's pretty much done it all. He's hit a three. A lot of shots from inside the paint, and he finally, after starting 0 for 4, made a couple free throws as well. Yeah, he's been an animal. He's been the most aggressive player on the floor from either side so far tonight. Really been looking to try and go out there and get a bucket every time he touches the ball. So they're going to need that play to continue uh, from him to kind of be both the main facilitator and aggressor for this Freddies team tonight. As for Danville, Walker Weckesser, 13 points to lead the team, three of those field goals coming from beyond the arc. Max Payne, six points. Dustin Beckett with five points. Levi Lyons with four. Wesley Payne with three. Spencer Payne with two for the Blue Devils. A little bit more balanced with them, but not getting as many points as the duo of Carpenter and Rule. Score by quarter. 22-12 Danville in the first. 24-11 Fredericktown in the second for the 33 36 to 33 lead. And while we have a moment, let's thank our sponsors one more time. Tonight's high school basketball broadcast brought to you live and free thanks to our generous sponsors. Killbuck Savings Bank, Community Banking, it's what we do, it's who we are every single day. The Hangout, food, fun, friends, stop in today and enjoy sandwiches, pizza, subs, and much more. Dine in or pick up right down the street here from Danville High School in, o in Danville, Ohio. Frito-Lay, we, we are driven and inspired by our purpose, food that matters for life's moments, and Knox Community Hospital in the community for the community. Thank you, everybody, for allowing this high school basketball broadcast to be brought to you live and free on the OH Report. 36-33. The score at the break, and what would you like to see from both sides going into the third quarter, Hayden? I think for Danville, you know, uh, try and get back to some of those things that you were doing at the beginning of the first half at the start of the game. Uh, they looked very comfortable uh, running fast, trying to get back on offense very quick, and firing away from three. Still just a three-point game, so if that's what they're comfortable with, you know, they always say shooters keep shooting, so uh, try to maybe get some more open looks, and then probably for Fredericktown, uh, continue to be uh, the main aggressor, continue to drive, continue to attack, and try to force Danville to always be on their feet. That has been the Frito-Lay halftime. Let's get back to action. 16 minutes from a winner. 36-33 Fredericktown, they have possession. Mass back out to Carpenter. Now to Lester, hit the three at the buzzer, and he starts the second half off with a two. 
He now with nine points. It's 38-33. You know he has to be feeling good coming out of the locker room off that buzzer beater. Black Esser. Big jump stop, pivots, works it around to Spencer Payne. First possession for the Blue Devils in half, number two. Four out look as Black Esser gets inside, kicks it back out. Payne's going to try a three. Doesn't get the friendly bounce. Rebound stays with Danville. We'll get a foul inside. We'll take a look at the first bucket of the second half. That was a nice uh, jumper right from about mid-range. But now 45 seconds in, we do have that first foul of the quarter. That's going to be the second foul against Trevor Bellman. 7.15 left here, quarter number three. Blue Devils looking to answer Fredericktown's first bucket of the half. Too strong on the three-point attempt. And Lester will come out with the rebound. Quickly ahead. Rule can't get it to fall, but there's Carpenter. Tenth offensive rebound for Fredericktown. Lester, nice move, but he can't get it to finish. And back comes Danville. Payne over the Weckesser. Fakes the three. He'll drive it in. Big jump stop again. Gets it left side. Lions for three off two parts of the iron. Won't go down. Quickly ahead. And it'll stay with Frederick Towns. We'll take a look at the replay. Maybe Lester tripped up a little bit, but maybe take it to the hole and look for sh the shot instead of the pass. Nonetheless, he's bailed out by a kick. Inbound the mast. Fakes the three, gets it into Carpenter. Nice post move, tough shot, good. Cade Carpenter, 17 points. Max Payne gets it to his brother Spencer, kicks it left side, now back out to Weckesser. Back to Max, he's going to try the three. Too strong, ball knocked out of bounds, and it will go to the Freddies. We'll take a look at that nice move by Cade Carpenter. Well, he's just showing that so far through this point tonight, you know, he, he's been the guy on the floor that's hungriest for a win. And he's making it happen uh, from the field and inside. Mast in the Leicester. Little mutual possession there on the contact, and Leicester gets the finish. He's got 11. Weckesser into the lane. He's fouled before the shot. We'll take a look at another bucket there by Lester here in the second half. That's going to be the third foul on Brady Lester. Bad pass by Danville. Fredericktown has numbers. Rule, yes. Timeout, Danville. What a start by the Freddies here in the second half. 44-33. Well, you know what, Travis? Here's another thing, too. Way too far right now, obviously, to get too premature and say that this one's wrapped up. It's just an 11-point lead. Uh, we've seen Danville ho hold a 10-point lead earlier tonight. So lead change, uh, you know, has happened quite a bit, but... If Frederick Talent was able to possess the ball here for a little bit longer, not saying they got to pass up on open looks, but do you think that could be something here as this quarter in the second half gets deeper? If they're able to just possess the ball a little bit longer, that they're really going to force Danville to have to heave up threes because they won't have any other choice. An 11 point Frederick Town lead on an 8 0 run to start the second half. 44 33. Freddie's now with three in double figures, 17 by Carpenter, 11 by Rule in Leicester. Back to action. Payne, nice back door to Max, but he misses the jumper offensive rebound, though. Back out to Weckesser for three. He can't get it to fall. Ball knocked out of bounds. It'll stay with Fredericktown. And those shots just not falling like they did in the first half right now to open a third quarter for the Blue Devils. 
They're getting some nice looks again, but just the shots haven't been falling on this side. Blue Devils looking for their first points of half number two. Spencer Payne. Gets it over the max. Spencer at 27 against Mount Gilead, only two thus far tonight. Nearly turned it over, but gets right back into the hands of Levi Lyons. Levi over to Walker. Crosses over, tries the drive. Picked up the dribble though. Almost throw it away, but Spencer's there. Coming right at Carpenter. They're gonna call the foul on Cade. A block, we'll see. Did he get position? He was still in the air. Yep, yeah, still moving, good call there. Only the second against Mr. Carpenter. Uh, still kudos uh, to Kate as well for yeah. stepping in there I mean, and taking he, that, though. Half uh, second earlier on that, he gets positioned, then, yeah, that's most likely going to be a charge, but just a tad bit too late. And I don't know if I would have gotten up that quick. Not anymore uh, if I was hit like that. Because drawing a charge, to be honest, it doesn't even matter. It does matter, but, you know, even the some of the smaller opponents, man, they're driving in there so hard. I would say it's a condensation oh, yeah, break, true, but it's a right? sweat break. It's sweat. Yeah, no, we got to come up with something. Con. It's not a. It's for basketball season. Perspiration. Perspiration. It's a perspiration break. There we go. Perspiration pause. Oh, look at you with the alliteration. Got to put that English degree to use somehow. <laughs> Spencer backs it out, gets it to Walker. Now over to Wesley. Carpenter went for the steal and said it's going to turn into the first points for Kendall Carter. 44-35. Lester over to Cade. Back to Brady. Good pass inside. Mass, yes, counted in the bucket. Scoring continues to come from a number of Freddies. As you mentioned, they had three in double digits and now Mass. I believe that was his first yes, it was. pair of points for the night. Yeah, Fredericktown only had four scores into the scoring column. However, they've done it in bunches, three of the four, so that help, that's helped them out. But finally, Mast onto the ball, onto the board. Three points. And we're going to get a foul. Let's take a look. I, maybe a little bit with the knee. Didn't see too much there. Nonetheless, it's going to be a foul on Bellman. And a much needed three for Danville. Back to a nine-point game on the other side. Big squat! Three from the left side. No good, though. Haven't even had a Ooh. moment yet to, to appreciate that block. That, that was ferocious. Speechless. But right back at you comes Fredericktown. Yeah, the Blue Devils, you know, it's tough to catch a break right now. They've been making some nice plays happen, but just have been getting matched by Frederick down that time. Wekeser draws the foul. As we take a look at Trevor Bellman's first points of the evening. And they're going to call him with the foul, so that's his fourth. Dan Hall to sub out here. Looks like Bean and Thompson will check in. Black Exer hits the first of two. Three for three thus far. Lock on wood. Got them both. 
That's what happens when you knock on wood. No jinx. Yeah, and those were big. You know, they, they got to try and keep this to no greater than 10 and start chipping away at it. If you're a coach, you'd probably like to get this to within maybe seven by the end of the quarter. Carpenter, nice move, but not ready was rule. Back the other way, Max Payne swatted, no good. And now Fredericktown has numbers. Thompson throws it away. Back comes Danville behind the back to Max Payne. Pull up jumper, short, rebound back to Fredericktown. And now we'll get a timeout, a full one for the Freddies with 2.25 left in the qu third quarter. So we're getting a little sloppy here on both sides. Yeah, I was going to say back-to-back -back possessions there that probably uh, are, are having both coaches thankful that whoever took the timeout did because on one hand you had the numbers over here for Fredericktown just didn't handle the situation. Uh, probably how coach would have liked the three-on-one and then down here and down 10. Probably not time for the showtime passing. Um, but, yeah, still a 10-point game here in the third quarter. Yeah, still a lot of time left for Danville, but they're going to have to, I guess, maybe get to within seven here by the end of the quarter, give you a good chance. Three possess Well, at least three possessions, so maybe eight points as well, eight, nine points. But uh, you'd like to see it within distance going into quarter number four. And some way to find, to, you know, kind of shift the momentum back in their favor or, or balance it out. No one's really had a dominant hand or, or control over the momentum here in the third quarter, but Fredertown still very comfortable. So try and, you know, cause some discomfort for them. A 14-7 third quarter. A lot of football players on this court, so you <laughs> could say, you know, a couple touchdowns for Fredericktown. Danville tried to answer with one, but still trails. Back underway, 2.20 left here, third quarter. Mast out the carpenter. Freddie still against that man, the man, and great job by Rule to get his 13th point, 52 40. Payne over to the other Payne, to the other Payne for three. No good. Back comes Fredericktown. Thompson in the lane, kicks it back out. Three in the air by Luke Bean. Mr. Bean's got it, 15 point game. And here, and this is a big critical possession now because things can start to spiral out of control really quick. If you're Danville, you need points here. Spencer gets it up to Walker. Walker for three, there's your answer. Big time shot from him in a critical moment. 21 points for Walker Weckesser. 80 seconds left in the quarter. Rule to Thompson. Rejected by Weckesser, but right back into the hands of Rule. He's stripped. Still puts it up and in. 60 seconds left. Spencer Payne over to Walker. Walker fakes the three. Tough shot. Answers again. 57-45. And he's really putting the team on his back right now, trying to get this one cut back down. Carpenter with the offensive tip and right to rule for two. Great job by Carpenter. Instead of going for the rebound, gets the tip out for the point. You call that an assist? Maybe a half, yeah. Kind of like right there almost. Levi Lyons off the tip. 22 seconds left. Carpenter's going to back it out. Most likely hold for the final shot, and he's going to be bumped. Take a look at that second effort by Lyons as he's going to be called for his second foul. And with 16 seconds and a 12-point lead, obviously if you're Fredericktown, you'd like another, you know, buzzer beater here, but if all else fails, you don't want Danville to touch the ball again here in the third quarter. Mast.
Looking to get it to Rule. Rule stripped for a second, five seconds, double teamed. Gets it over Mullins. He's going to try for a three. It's short. Thompson there, but he could not get it off at the buzzer, and that's how we will go to the fourth. 59-47 Fredericktown as we head the money time. We'll get there after the break. You're watching K-Mac Boys Hoops live and free on the OH Report. At the Kilbuck Savings Bank, you can expect great products and service from a fellow Knox County Chamber member. Now offering premier card processing solutions and services, ensuring the business owners understand their credit card processing fees. We have a wide selection of card processing solutions that provide lower fees, faster payment, additional security, exceptional marketing features, and help to improve your business operations and customer experience. <laughs> Merry Christmas! In the words of OH Report, CEO, founder, Brian Skaronski, and president, it's money time, my friends, here in Danville, 59-49. As Carter gets his fourth point, we are underway. Travis Berardi alongside Hayden Gray, the final KMAC game of the night. The other two are done. Centerburg Northmore victorious. Who will be victorious here between... Fredericktown and Danville as we take a look. Nice, just passing inside to break that zone look to cut this to 10. Next time out we get, we're going to look at our schedule for the rest of the week, but uh, go ahead, Hayden. I was just curious, you know, if Danville will try and use any of that inside game as well. Obviously, they'd love to just cut this lead down with that barrage of threes that they've had success with tonight, but They've had a couple baskets inside that have gone their way, so we'll see if they kind of try and utilize that in the final quarter. Mullins had a chance to shoot. Instead gives it to Thompson, kicks it right side to Mast again. Spins around, puts it up off the front iron, no good. Mullins had it for a second, but it goes off the foot of Carter, and it will stay with Fredericktown. Big third quarter for Tegan Rule. Eight points to lead all scores in that quarter. Tied with Cade Carpenter for the team lead at 17. Bean in and out, left it hanging, had good reason to, but it just wouldn't fall. Back comes Danville as they get a good break there. Skip pass. Out to Weckesser. He drives it in. Double team creates the contact. And we'll go to the lines. You take a look at the Knox Community Hospital replay. Yeah, that was one of those NBA level create the contact launch into it and pick up the foul. But hey, if it gets you to the line with a chance for two. Third foul on Tegan Rule. Susan Eichelberry watching from McAllen, Texas. Go Blue. Hopefully you're doing all right. I know there was some severe weather in the Texas area yesterday and today, so hope, hoping all is well for you. Weckesser hit the first of his two free throws to cut this to within nine points. Hits them both. 25 for Walker tonight. Lester works it to Bean. Now to Mast. Carpenter thought about the three twice, but hands it over to Lester. Thompson now kicks it back out. Carpenter again thought about the three. Instead, he'll back it out. Lester inside. Spin move, but too strong. Danville with a chance to go on a run here. Payne. He'll drive in. Jump stop, puts it up. 
gets the friendly roll. Danville on a run. Just like that, it's back to five point deficit. 59-53. Carpenter, left side, Mast, he'll drive it in. Spin move, puts it up, but can't get it to fall. Now all of a sudden the Blue Devils having all the touch on the finishes. Frederick Town can't buy a bucket. Spencer back out to Max for three. Yes! Three point game. A 9-0 run. Let's take a look at the replay, Aiden. Yeah, you know, Carter very upset with this one. I, s just. I still see, they. even if he gets ball, it's just the way his the angle of the hand, yep. he gets the arm as well. Yeah, there's just been a lot of those 50-50s where some nights those are going to get called and other nights it's going to be a clean block. If there's one thing you can say, though, the officials, they, they've stuck to their method of calling tonight uh, instead of, you know, going back and forth with how they have ruled on those. Completely agree with you. Carpenter hits two, but, folks, we've got ourselves a game with 5.30 left. 61-56, Fredericktown. A 9-2 run by the Blue Devils have them right in this. Payne gets it to Walker Weckesser, leading all scorers with 25. Back to Max. Driving it in, nearly loses the handle, somehow gets it out for three. Carter, too strong. Back comes Thompson, speeding through, throws it off the head of Lester and into the hands of Danville. Weckesser driving in, he's fouled, and that's going to be number seven against Fredericktown. We're going to have a one and one. Third foul against Brady Lester. And this just infused another big breath of life into Danville with just under five minutes to go in the final quarter. You know, and they only missed two free throws during the first half. First free throws, no good. The first missed by Weckesser. Carpenter, open three, hits it. He was left alone. I think Carter might have been his guy. You know, they've had they've been matched up a little bit here in the second half, and if so, they want to try and exploit that matchup. Turnover Danville. Carpenter with the strip. Right side, fakes the three, he's going to drive it in. Layup shot just off the mark and a big contact on the rebound. He'll go to the line. That'll be the third against Kendall Carter. And just like that, Fredericktown with a chance to get this back to double digits. First free throw good. Carpenter's got that free throw touch back. He's now got 23. Carter, that wasn't anything malicious. No. He just went for the block again, and Carpenter just didn't have the ball. Well, and I don't know why, I, you know, I'm, fine. I'm drawing a lot of comparisons. It's just I can't, when I see Blue Devils, I think Danville, I think Carey. You know, he reminds me of kind of like a Jordan Vallejo type player uh, who's a big physical guy. 7-0 run for Fredericktown. You call him an SUV, though? No. More like a sports utility? No, yeah, Jor yeah Jordan Vallejo has the Winnebago Oh, he's the nickname. Winnebago. That's why, yeah. To himself. That's true. Payne's going to try a three. In and out. Rebound to Mullins. Midway point of quarter four, 66-56. Fredericktown. Carpenter, spin move, closely Garden, gets it back out. Inside the Mullins, double teamed, 
Works it around, three in the air for Mass. Too strong, rebound to Danville. They get the stop, back they come. Into the lane and we'll get a block in two fouls. Got to give a big shout out to our boy Shane Nepp watching tonight. Hey. District, Central District Player of the Year last year in awesome. D4. East Knox alum gave East Knox its first ever district championship. Thank you for watching, Shane. So let's go Walker. Mr. Weckesser leading all scores with 25 points. Has a chance to add on, but hope you're doing well in college, Mr. Nepp. Thank you for watching. Still trying to get the folks at East Knox to name the court <laughs> after you and uh, Mr. Melick. Shane Nepp court at Weston Melick Gymnasium. I mean, how, how hard is that? <laughs> Just off the rim, no good. Saves a nine point game. Carpenter. Nice backdoor cut, mass layup, good. Five points for Ben, it's 68-57. Payne forces one up, no good, rebound to Carpenter. Fakes it, gives it to Mast. Mast into the lane, kicks it back out. Carpenter. For a split second, I thought he was going to pull up from NBA range. <laughs> I but started then he to thought think so too. Rule. Crosses over into the lane, jumps, rejected again. Back comes Walker, but he's stripped. Ahead. Easy layup, good. Tegan Rule with 19. On the other side, Carpenter returns the favor. Wow. And we're going to get a foul. Welcome to the block party, Mr. Gray. Both sides with some swats here in quarter number four. Well, and now more importantly, a chance for Fredericktown on this possession pending, you know, a two or three. Launch this right back up to a 15 or 16 point game and, and with two minutes remaining, would probably all but solidify the, the, the W here tonight. Make sure to stay tuned after the game for the Hangout MVP. Coming up after the game. Frederick Town, working it around, masked. Now to the hands of Bellman. Now to Carpenter. Under two to play. 13-point lead for the Freddies. And if I'm not mistaken, that's probably the largest lead. We've seen them at 12 a couple times, but this has been the largest of the night. Yeah, they had a chance for 15 earlier, but I think 13, that's your biggest lead for either side. I believe Danville's largest lead was 10, so we've had it all tonight. I mean, that's a 25-point spread. 90 seconds left. Now, if you're Danville, I mean, yeah, yeah. 13 point game. I, I mean, if you would have started the foul, you would have done it already. Yeah, I don't know if you do. I mean, obviously they're not gonna they're not gonna lay down for reasons like that. But almost turned it over. Now they will advance it in for the bucket. Bellman with five, 72-57, and that might just close things out for the night. Max Payne for three. Dolda. Yes, and one. Hold the phone. Max Payne with a chance for the four-point play. I'm not quite sure I've witnessed a four-point play all season long, and I don't even know about last season. That's going to be the fifth foul for Bellman, so he's going to check out with five points tonight. 64 seconds left, and the door just a little bit open after that three by Max Payne, his fourth of the night. Now Fredericktown's going to call a timeout and give us a chance to show you what we have going on the rest of the week. First, let's start on the boys' side. Tonight, Galleon Lucas, and then the game we're at right now, Fredericktown-Danville. Friday, 
three. Count them three. I believe you and I will be Mohawk at Upper Sandusky. Mm -hmm. Monroeville Crestview, that's going to be a good one between two of the top teams in the Firelands Conference. And then the Centerburg Trojans out of conference will take on Worthington Christian. That's a big, one of those big uh, non-conference games that really determine where you're going to be going. Can you, you know, play with one of the best teams in the Central District in Division Three? Friday also a highlight carry at Colonel Crawford, two of the best teams in the Northern Ten. And then Saturday I'll be back at Upper Sandusky as they take on View Cyrus. Now for the girls tomorrow. Live and free, East Knox at Centerburg. Well, Hayden and I, we're just going to pitch a tent. We'll be right back here at 6 o'clock <laughs> as the Lady Devils and the Lady Freddies go at it. Then Saturday, two live games, Mount Gilead at Fredericktown. The Freddies back on again. And I'm staying at Bucyrus, doing a doubleheader. Girls and boys, Bucyrus up for Sandusky. And Hayden, I believe you're going to be doing yeah. a highlight of the city game, Mansfield Senior and Madison. So stay tuned on the OH Report, Facebook and YouTube pages for live and free games as well as highlights all week, every week, for the rest of our lives. <laughs> but we like it that way. And I'm telling you what, Friday night, uh, not a single one of those games disappoint because I've heard a lot of people, I think we've received some messages saying that we've got to come out and, and take in this Mohawk team yeah. this year too. So Cannot wait. Not a bad game to watch on Friday night. Freddy's. Back out to run some clock. And we're finally going to get a foul. And I believe also uh, Mr. Rule accidentally got bumped in a place I don't want to talk about right now. <laughs> Nonetheless, we'll have free throws coming, I believe, for Xavier Mullins. Negative. No, I think we're going to call. They stopped the play because of I Mr. Gotcha. Rule, so it's safety precaution. Nonetheless, back in the play. I mean, I don't. And finally, we're going to get a foul. Nate Stevens called for the foul, and maybe you wanted to see that about 15 seconds ago, but. Yeah, I, I mean, I guess you foul one more time. Uh, 11 points in 40 seconds, I guess, wouldn't be unfathomable, but uh, pretty remarkable it would be. So a one and one coming up for Brady Lester. He has 11 points already. Can't get the first one to fall. Rebound to Danville. They got to push it ahead. They do. Spencer Payne with the scoop, but misses. And a jump ball. But it will stay with Fredericktown. So yeah. that'll pretty much do it with an 11 point lead and only 35.4 left here in the game. Oh, Danville gets a steal. Payne inside, layup rejected Ooh. by Kate Carpenter. <laughs> My goodness. Well, I think he just Ooh. all but solidified a, a little something that we have coming up after the game, Trav. Yeah, that's, that's player of the game. 10 second call, though. And that will give us a chance to watch. Yeesh. Came out of nowhere, too, out of the shot. Just such an explosive athlete. Really talented across all three sports, you know, football, basketball, baseball. Max Payne, back out to Spencer. Back to Max, he's gonna try a three with 10 seconds in and out, no good. Carpenter with the rebound and that will wrap things up. The final. 72-61 Fredericktown as they get back to 500 and remain unbeaten in the K-Mac. We'll take a break. Be back with our The Hangout MVP stats and analysis. Much more in the free to lay post game. After this break, we're watching Boys High School Hoops live and free on the OH Report.
At Knox Community Hospital, your primary care physician is more than someone who delivers your test results, more than someone who writes prescriptions, more than someone who listens to your heart. We are your health care partner who takes the time to know you, listen to your concerns, and provide you with expert personalized care to make and keep you well. Because to us, you're more than just numbers on a chart. You're a neighbor and a friend. Knox Community Hospital, in the community, for the community. At the Kilbuck Savings Bank, you can expect great products and service from a fellow Knox County Chamber member. Now offering premier card processing solutions and services, ensuring the business owners understand their credit card processing fees. We have a wide selection of card processing solutions that provide lower fees, faster payment, additional security, exceptional marketing features, and help to improve your business operations and customer experience. You know you gotta climb higher Time now 
now for the Hangout MVP, and it is Fredericktown senior Cade Carpenter, a team high 24 points. Pretty balanced as well, 15 in the first half, 14, well, nine in the second half actually, but 24 points, congratulations Cade. Um, Danville came out on fire. They led you 22-12 after one, but what was said by coach in between the first and second quarters because it seemed like you guys took over from there? Uh, we just had to play harder. We knew that they were gonna be a pretty average team coming down here. Playing in Danville is always tough. It's a smaller gym. You just gotta adapt to the rims. They're different. And uh, well, we just figured out how to play, play as a team, and we came out with a really hot second quarter and carried that into the second half. He yeah, had over 23 points in two quarters. The second and the third really helped you pull away. But uh, I'm impressed by the balance that you guys have this year. You scored 24. Tegan had 19. Brady had 11. Luke had eight. You only had four scores in that first half, but then everybody else started picking things up in that second half. Just uh, how nice is it to see that you have multiple guys that can put up big numbers each night? Oh, it's awesome. We, uh, we're all family. We always hang out, everybody. And uh, just knowing that when you, after the game, they have your back, knowing that if you make a mistake, they got your back. It's just something that most teams I feel like don't have, and we have it. So I feel like we can come out better than most teams. You guys now still unbeaten in KMAC play. Yes, you played some tough non-conference opponents, though. But, you know, early on in the season, you want to be tested like this. You want to be still, you know, doing well in the conference. But those non-conference games, they go a long way down the line. Just uh, how important was it to get these tougher opponents early on in the season to really get you guys going? Uh, tougher opponents were really, really helpful. We played some good scrimmages against good teams. Got us got us going early and just, like I said, playing as a team, knowing our opponents. Everybody does a good job of watching film, watching huddle, and uh, just knowing the game when we need to is what makes this team run. You guys going up now on Friday against an improved Mount Gilead squad. What's it going to take to get the win and remain unbeaten in conference play? Uh, free throws. We got to knock down our free throws. We struggled with that tonight. Um, just rebounding. We got we got to get more rebounds. Playing better in transition and shooting. We got to get our uh, three point percentage up. Okay. Uh, and lastly, as always, you know, looking in the camera, give anybody a shout out. Go for it, my friend. Shout out, coach, and shout out my team for having my back and playing hard. All Thank right. You. Thank you, K Appreciate Carpenter. It. Team high. 24 points. Good luck on Friday. There is Cade Carpenter as we welcome back Mr. Hayden Gray into the Frito-Lay postgame show with the final score once again 72 61. Uh, always nice talking to Mr. Carpenter, well-spoken gentleman in multiple sports, probably because we've talked to him so darn much. But uh, I like what he said. You know, they, they, got, they put 72 points up, but he says they could do better. <laughs> yeah, I always like that. Kate always striving to do better. Uh, I think that, you know, kind of translates over from every sport that he competes in. And uh, that's, you know, the true spirit of high school sports, you know, uh, trying to get better each and every night as a team. Uh, Kate definitely embodies that and you can tell uh, this Fredericktown group got to be dangerous in the K-Mac. Yes they are they remain unbeaten to get the victory so let's see how they were able to do it with our final stats once again brought to you by Frito Lay 72-61 28 field goals to 20 Danville had 10 threes though they cut that down though a three point game about 520 left in the fourth quarter however Kate Carpenter and company, calm, cool, collected, pulled away for the victory. They out-rebounded Danville by 10 on the boards, uh, 11 offensive rebounds, 23 defensive rebounds to only 17 defensive and 7 offensive for the Blue Devils. Turnovers, it was a pretty clean played game. There was a couple giveaways, you know, in that third quarter that – knocked up the number for Danville and then Fredericktown a couple giveaways late when really the game was out of hand so uh, a pretty cleanly played game fouls there were a lot of fouls tonight and like Cade said they were 10 and 19 from the line they got to you know clean that up just a little bit especially the start that he had he was 0 for 4 from the line and 1 of 5. Yeah they've definitely got you know their list of things that they'll want to take away from 
uh, game film and game tape and improve on. Uh, it's no secret they struggled from the free throw line tonight. Uh, but then you look at the positives too, winning the rebound battle and, you know, six turnovers for four quarters, not bad at all. Uh, you know, just under two turnovers per quarter. So definitely some things they'll take away from this one uh, that won't just be all negative. Uh, there's definitely some positives to draw out of this win as well. So there is your final stats brought to you by Frito-Lay. And let's break down some individual scoring for tonight. First, for the visiting Freddies and Cade Carpenter did lead the way, finished with eight field goals, 24 points total. Tegan Rule with 19, Brady Lester with 11, Luke Bean with eight, then Ben Mast, Trevor Bellman also breaking into the scoreboard in the second half with five points each. And like I said, 11 offensive rebounds for Fredericktown, 23 defensive and only six turnovers, three in the first half and three in the second half. As for Danville, they were led by a game high 26 points by Walker Weckesser, five front threes to help that out. He was followed by Max Payne who hit four threes, finished with 13 points. Levi Lyons with six, Dustin Beckett with five, Spencer Payne, Kendall Carter with four, and Wesley Payne with three. Danville finishes seven offensive rebounds, 17 defensive rebounds, and only three turnovers in the second half. They finish with 10 points. Score by quarter. Danville, 22-12. They had a great first quarter to lead by 10, but then Fredericktown got it going. 24-11 lead by three at the break. That three coming from Trevor Bellman at the buzzer to give them the lead. They then outscore Danville 23-14 in the third quarter. The lead 59-47 and then a Danville 14-13 fourth quarter, but it was not enough as Fredericktown wins at 72-61. They improved to 500, 3-3 overall and 3-0 in the KMAC. They remain with Centerburg atop the KMAC. Northmore a game behind. Danville still looking for win number one, not only in conference, but overall both well, all four games, conference games, they are 0-4, but they put up some offense. Just need to look a little bit more for that defense. And before I let you go, Hayden, any final words here before, you know, we leave for about, you know, 10 hours and then come back here for some girls' basketball? Uh, it was definitely a competitive game. Look forward to coming back here tomorrow night. And thanks, everyone, for tuning in tonight. All righty. That'll wrap things up here from... Danville, Ohio. I want to thank everybody who helped make things possible tonight. Hey, great color and camera. The one-two punch, as always. Brian Skaronski, Jory Hollenbeck, Adam Thompson back at the OH Report. Killbuck Savings Bank, our scoreboard sponsor. The Hangout, our MVP sponsor. Free delay, free game, post game, halftime sponsor. Knox Community Hospital, our instant replay sponsor. Killbuck and Knox also our commercial sponsors. And I want to thank the fine folks here at Danville High School DJ Kane for allowing us to be here for Danville Boys and Girls Hoops. And most importantly, we want to thank you, the fans, for watching. Fredericktown will head home Friday to take on Mount Gilead, while Danville will go to the castle to take on the Golden Knights on Friday. But for us, Kate and I will be right back here tomorrow, Fredericktown Danville Girls Hoops. And we'll also have East Knox at Centerburg. All coming up tomorrow, live and free on the OH Report. I want to thank you, the fans, for watching. For Hayden Gray, I'm Travis Ferrari saying so long from Danville.